this isn't the first time I've had trouble with her either. <laughs> a couple of few months back, you know, where I live in the western part of Massachusetts, out in the hills there, and the nearest airport that actually goes somewhere is like down Hartford Springfield Airport there. And we've been going to that one for years, down through the back roads, it takes about an hour and a half. And I was taking her down, she was going somewhere just a few months back. And you know how it is when you actually get to the airports these days, you don't actually stop. I mean, you just slow down and somebody's waiting, keep moving, keep moving, you know. So you open up the door, you get a running start, out goes the stuff, you get out, you know, you got the you know, cell phone, yeah, see you later, bye, and you take off. So I'm driving back to the house and the phone rings, it's my wife. She said, honey, come and get me. I said, what do you mean? Just drop you off. She said, just come and get me. I said, well, did they cancel the flight or something? She said, no, I've been arrested. I said, you've been arrested? She, I said, what happened? She said, I can't talk. I'm in handcuffs. Just come and get me. So I turned the car around. I'm going back to the airport. I'm calling the kids. You know, mom's been arrested. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Connecticut State Troopers are calling me on the phone, giving me instructions on how to come and get her. You know, you drive in, you park in the no parking zone behind the squad car that's parked there, you get out, you stand around in the no standing zone until somebody comes and tells you what to do, and I'm just going, okay, okay. So I finally get there, I'm waiting about a half hour, out come my wife, handcuffed behind her back with a big Connecticut state trooper pushing her along, and four or five of his friends just for security, whatever. The big one comes over to me, he says, Mr. Guthrie, first of all, I'm a fan. <laughs> he starts rattling off these obscure records that even I don't have of mine. You know? And the other cops that are with him are saying, oh yeah, I got that one. Oh, I like this one better. And I'm just saying, tell me what happened. So they said, oh, well what happened is, we're standing around, we saw a bag going through security. And it had a tag on it that said, Arlo Guthrie. And we said, we know he's not here. What kind of idiot is pretending to be him? <laughs> so they, they're going to open up the bag, and in there is a little tin that somebody had given me at a gig like this. You know, you just take it, thank you very much, throw it in the suitcase or something. I forgot all about it. This one had a picture of a familiar plant on the top <laughs> with the words Amsterdam written underneath. <laughs> they said, we better open this. So they open it up, and like a jack-in-the-box, all the stuff come flying out, you know, and they're picking up pieces, say, this is evidence, and they're putting it all together. She's saying, I didn't know that was there. They're saying, all right, lady. And they're calling her off, you know. And eventually, they find out who she is, and they said, Mrs. Gutter, we are so sorry. I mean, we've got better things to do than be arresting people for this stuff these days. And frankly, if we'd have known it was you, we wouldn't have bothered. But now that you've been arrested, we can't unarrest you. So we're taking you down to the cell. You'll be there for a while. We'll process you, and your husband will come and get you. So she's been there an hour and a half to tell him the story on the curb there, undoing the handcuffs. She's a c serial hugger. She knows them all by their first names now. She's hugging them all. Goodbye. Thank you very much. They're backing off going, oh, my God, hippies, you know. <laughs> anyway, to get her out of there, I had to take pictures with the arresting officer. You know. <laughs> Here's an old song from my wife. <laughs>